Morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have such a full house with us at the rentrée for the presidency priority briefing. And I'm very honored to welcome this morning the Spanish ambassador, Marcos Alonso Alonso, for an exchange about the presidency priorities. But I'm sure that also in light of yesterday's State of the Union, we will also touch on the broader political context. My name is Elizabeth Kuiper. I'm Associate Director at the European Policy Center. And again, it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces with us. And I think by now you know the EPC's presidency format. It's quite straightforward. I will introduce the ambassador, after which he will set out the presidency priorities. And then we have an exchange, because I'm sure that, again, in light of the current political context, the geopolitical context, but also perhaps the national situation in Spain, you may have a lot of questions for the ambassador. And I already announced you that we're going to be quite strict on time, because as you can imagine, the ambassador has a very full agenda. So in that respect, I try to be a good timekeeper as well. So, Ambassador, um, the Spanish presidency started in July 23, and it's called the so-called Golden Presidency. And I think that's for a reason, because you're one of the last presidencies that actually needs to adopt quite a few files. Because even if the Commission claims that they are on track with 90% of their priorities, I think that still means that you have quite a few issues to deal with. And so, therefore, Spain is expected to make progress on uh, important files, also to do with the situation um, in Ukraine, uh, the green transition, but also the economic government reforms, just to touch on a few issues that we will go into more detail in later. Indeed, as I said, the national situation where uh, three weeks into the presidency you had elections uh, probably didn't make your life any easier with a hung parliament. And therefore, following the State of the Union yesterday, I'm very interested to hear more about how Spain is um, dealing with um, the, the hot seats, as they call it. And also perhaps to touch on what President von der Leyen yesterday called how um, Spain, as the presidency, is answering the cold history. So, Ambassador, again, it's a pleasure to have you with us this morning. Let me properly introduce you and pick out a few elements of your very interesting CV. You have been a permanent representative of Spain to the EU since 21, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you have been ambassador of Spain to Albania. Um, you have been um, uh, consul in Havana. So again, I think also when it comes to your uh, geopolitical experience, um, I think that's very relevant uh, background as well as um, your place as department uh, director in the department of the G20, I think is very interesting in light of the recent G20 and also the discussions going on about Ukraine there. So I think I keep it at that um, because again, there's much more to say about you, but again, we're honored to have you with us. And I would like to introduce you to say a few words about the Spanish presidency priorities. I'm going to go there. Yes, feel free. One and then I come back here. Yes. No, no. Um, yep. Is this the oh no, it's already on. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much, first of all, Elizabeth, for, for your words and for the invitation to be here uh, today. Um, yeah, very interesting presentation. I mean, you, 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 uh, you, you were looking in my CV what you could actually say, and, and you clearly spotted what is more exotic, which is Havana. <laughs> uh, yes, all the rest is quite boring. Yes, indeed. EU, 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 EU. <laughs> So that often happens to me when they ask you, oh, where, where have you been? Where have you been? And you say, oh, well, you know, I've been here three times. Like, okay, fine, fine, fine. No, I was posted to NATO. I say, fine, fine, fine. Uh, no, I was uh, I was DG back home and dealing with the European Council. So, okay, fine, fine, fine. I was I was supposed to have an, oh, Havana. So, so that's clearly. That's, uh, <laughs> so that's, um, that's, that's well spotted. Anyway, as you say, um, I'm going to touch upon a little bit about Spain's priorities for the process of, for the presidency of the of the council although for me uh, to talk uh, about the Spain's priorities now in September it, uh, it seems to be a little bit outdated so I will try to 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 quickly um, mention something about them uh, say something about what what I perceive we have done uh, so far because uh, you know time goes by quite quickly and uh, I think it was we had a very good month of, of July and, 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 and I will elaborate on, on that but as you, you said yourself at the end of the day uh, you know it's, it's very difficult for me to come here and talk about Spain's uh, priorities of the presidency I mean after uh, President for the Lion yesterday deliver his uh, final not final okay we'll see but anyway so far exactly in this mandate definitely the final a speech uh, on the state of the union, which I find was uh, an, an interesting, uh, an interesting, uh, interesting one, and um, and maybe we can 
I mean, exchange views and, and ask questions and see how uh, this speech was in the light of our priorities or because at the end of the day we have our priorities, but our priorities do not come out of the blue. I mean, they have to be inscribed in in you you in in, in reality, new reality. You mentioned uh, that we have a golden uh, presidency. Uh, let's let's say, or at least I tend to think that it's golden uh, when you take into account the number of of files. Okay, that's a way of looking at that, and um, you know the files that we have to deal with, but. But the, the, the presidency inscribes itself in, in a political context, not only mine, uh, you know, your Spanish political context, but the European political context, um, and which is quite interesting, but, but, but tricky, uh, because we know what, what's going on uh, in Ukraine and what has changed uh, Ukraine uh, geopolitically. Uh, and also internally for the EU, and and I think that's that's uh, those interactions. I mean, the the council and the presidency of the council is just one actor in 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 this cosmos, uh, you know, that that the EU uh, is. And uh, I wouldn't. I mean, we are an important actor. I mean, I, I wouldn't underestimate us uh, either. But I think that we we cannot just take the priorities uh, separately. Uh, to to the the, the the broader context, uh, and I see that, uh, but that's more for the for the debate and discussion uh, every single day. You know, when when we talk about the MFF, or when we talk about migration, when we talk about enlargement, when we talk about um, I don't know individual intelligence, or we talk about Euro Seven, or we talk about uh, energy. You know, a, a, everything is linked to 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 the context uh, that we are living in. We have elections. I will touch upon the elections in Spain, but we have elections everywhere. We have elections in, in the Slovak Republic. We have elections in Poland. We have elections in the Netherlands. We have elections next year in Belgium. So 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 um, elections are flourishing, so, which is a good thing when it comes to democracy. I always say that uh, it's the lack of elections we should worry us more than the, the, the actually the existence of elections. But, you know, I, I don't want to be unorganized. So as I said, the first thing uh, I wanted to to touch upon is is a quick overview of our of what the presidency means of, of our priorities, and um, I would say something uh, first of all, which is that Spain is a very pro-European country. That's some that, that that comes. I mean, many people say that. It might seem like a normal thing to say uh, when it comes to a presidency, but I think at the, at the end of the day, it's not so normal. It's more exceptional than we think. We don't have so many fully pro-European countries where the government is extremely pro-European and where the society is extremely European, pro-European. So I think it's, it's actually what we need, actually. It, it ended up well. Uh, and actually, uh, our motto, the motto of our presidency is Europa más cerca, Europe closer. And that shows, and even if I can explain a little bit further the, the logo, you saw the logo is very simple, and it has just the words EU or, or UE, depends on the language you, 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 you read it, and it's blue and it just has the E, it's in, in the College of the Spanish, uh, because what, what we try to show is that member states and all of us, citizens, Spain in this case, are just part of, of the EU. It's, 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 it's I mean, the, the unity of, um, uh, of all the elements that compose the EU. It's, it's, it's not you have the member states and the council, it's not, it's, it, that's actually an essential part of the EU. Anyway, that's for about the, the motto and, and about, um, uh, about the presidency as such. The presidency is, uh, is a heavy task. We had been preparing for, for a, lo I mean, a long time, two years, I would say, since I arrived. I arrived in 2021, indeed, that, that, that was. Um, all ministers were involved in the preparation, all regions. They prepared actually um, a document to, to, uh, to be used for the, for the priorities. Uh, despite of, of where we, can, we, can, we, we might hear, I would say all political parties were involved because the parliament, uh, the parliament actually presented uh, 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 its own input to the to the government when when drafting the the, the presidency. Uh, Four hundred uh, cultural and technical events, five hundred legislative and non-legislative files, eighty files going to trial logs, thirty-four formal council meetings, and twenty-two informal ministerial meetings. And uh, just to mention just two big, 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 big events, uh, the, the Latin America Summit that uh, we'll touch upon a little bit briefly uh, a little bit later on, and then Granada now uh, in, in October, the informal council plus the European political community just the day before uh, early October. So that shows that, that it's, from that point of view, it's quite golden. 
uh, or, or maybe, I don't know, <laughs> the opposite. But, but anyway, uh, when it comes to the priorities, very simple, because I'm sure you have all read uh, our, our little uh, paper. We have uh, four main themes. Uh, the first one is uh, we want uh, reindustrialization of the EU and um, or we want to reindustrialize the EU and ensure its open strategic autonomy because while remaining an open, reliable, multilateral player, Europe also needs to ensure that it can stand up on its own feet, especially in the current uh, international and global juncture. Secondly, the green transition and environmental adaptation. I think that's, uh, that's obvious that I mean, we have many fines, but it's obvious as a concept. Uh, it, it might not seem so obvious uh, when we listen to some of the uh, positions or some uh, parts of society and the political spectrum, populists, namely, uh, who actually even some deny still uh, the, the effects of global change. I think that this summer with, with the floods and fires and even a combination of fires and floods uh, when uh, it comes to, to Greece, which is quite, 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 uh, quite terrible. I mean, it shows that this is uh, this is an important uh, element for 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 uh, for for EU's uh, construction, but not only uh, in terms of mitigation, also in terms of of opportunity for business and and also an opportunity uh, for for our um, for societies. I, I think von der Leyen was even quite emotional yesterday in the in the speech when she referred to her grandchildren. And now she has grandchildren. She thinks a lot about her grandchildren. And the kind of of, of world, the kind of uh, that they will be uh, having, and she even said that are they going to have spring, summer, autumn, and 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 winter? So she then she elaborated a little bit further. But the first thing she said, or she mentioned, was uh, was uh, was actual climate change and and environmental attention and how attached she was to the green transition. Third pillar, third theme of our of our presidency. It, it cannot come as a surprise to 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 uh, to you having uh, you know uh, um, um, uh, the government that we have a progressive uh, government uh, these days, uh, which is to promote social and economic justice, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, economic growth is nothing if we leave people behind. That's what I have in my notes. I would even say even if we leave regions and and businesses behind. So that's that's part of of how we see. This third, this third priority for us, and then finally, we want to strengthen uh, European unity, because and that's uh, something that's been repeated. But I think it's is very important. Only acting united, by being united, we can actually achieve the big results that we need. We, 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 of course, we can achieve, uh, uh, you know, uh, and conclude files. But I think that at the end of the day. One of the important things, and I think it's quite special when it comes to ours, that's why when, when people say about golden presidency, it's not just about, about files, it's about the challenges. And the challenge is not just to close this file or the other, it's to actually move and steer uh, EU's unity uh, on, on, on some of these big, big, big issues that they're not so easy to, to close. So that's in a nutshell, um, that's in a nutshell uh, our priorities. Since you mentioned, uh, although I replied a little bit, uh, our elections. Uh, indeed, the start of the of the presidency uh, came just some some weeks before uh, our uh, elections on twenty third of of July, um, and I'm convinced that what I was saying and telling everyone uh, early July is, is was true, still applies, which was namely that we should not be worried about elections. That we were going, Spain was going to have elections. In any case, we were going to have elections at the latest by the end of the year. So it actually, instead of having elections at the end of our presidency, the decision was to have elections just at the beginning. So to clear, to clear the air, uh, and I think it ended up quite well because if you if you follow. Uh, Spanish politics and European politics, uh, I think the atmosphere was quite toxic, politically speaking, very divisive. Uh, there was loss of, uh, of, of pollution, CO2 in the air. We were breathing, all of us. And I think that uh, I wouldn't say that everything is solved, but I think we are in a completely different mindset and things are much, much uh, calmer these, day, these days. The, the, the presidency was conceived as a, a country project. For the whole 
you know, for Spain. It's not uh, the presidency of the of the of the government. It's not the presidency of a political party. It's not the presidency of a part of the of, of the society. It's it's a country project that uh, can be seen in many in, in many ways. For example, by the the number of meetings that we are having uh, throughout Spain. I think it's it's uh, all all regions all regions uh, are hosting uh, informal councils or or, or a high level meeting because we want. Uh, the presidency to permeate uh, in, 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 in Spanish society. This is a great opportunity for many things to, to achieve results, but to bring EU closer to, to, to Spain, to, to, to the citizens, and to bring Spain a bit closer to, to the EU. So, so, uh, so when it comes to elections, I, I, I think it was, it was a very good decision and, 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 and nothing, as you see, happened. And as I said, um, uh, all other member states uh, uh, decided to follow the example of Spain and then uh, have elections too. Uh, maybe not in the presidency, but anyway, uh, the French had elections during the presidency, even two or three, because they had the first, uh, you know, uh, round, the second round, then legislative. Uh, the Belgians will have European and national elections. So, 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 I, as I said, I'm not worried, and I think that time that has passed has proven that we should not have been worried by the elections. Now, how have we managed so far? I think that pretty well. I'm actually quite proud. I, I, you would say, I mean, <laughs> you should be not be the one saying that. But I think we had a terrific month of July, from my point of view, in terms of rhythm and in terms of result, results, uh, uh, an excellent one. Uh, I would be more, more, much more than happy if all the months uh, to, to come <laughs> uh, were as, as July. Because uh, we had, well, for example, when it comes uh, when it comes uh, to talk about Ukraine, for example, we have very good results. We had Edirpa, for example. We had ASAP, which were, which we, which we achieved achieved what, good for the European industry, good for Ukraine, uh, not easy files. We had uh, sanctions in Russia, sanctions on Belarus, which had been blocked for months. Let's let's, let's remind that. Uh, we had all the sanctions on 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 other on other areas on uh, uh, on Iran, Haiti, Sudan, or other against other oppressive regimes. Um, we had uh, in, we closed important files, like for example the Chips Act, the Data Act. Uh, we uh, yesterday, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, you know, the European Parliament. Passed or uh, voted on on the EP composition. We had a deal in the council on EP composition, which is a unanimity file, as you all know. Not not so, not so easy. Uh, that was close. Also, we uh, the council did its job when it came to closing the the uh, the um, cooperation and verification mechanism on Bulgaria. And and uh, I know that that's officially being done in September. But anyway. The decision, and it went through the council, through council in in July. Um, we had, of course, I'm very proud of that. When it comes to, and I put that in unity and promotion of social and economic justice, uh, we managed to get a deal on the on the post Cotonou agreement. We we get that agreement over uh, the council. That agreement is important for for the our relation with with uh, I think it's almost 80 countries uh, from Africa, Caribbean, and the Pacific. It had been blocked uh, in the council for quite some time, uh, and, and and there and there we are. Now we are waiting for. I mean, we would. I think we already have a date to for its uh, formal signing in Samoa, uh, and I think it was good uh, for the relationship between the EU and these countries. But I think it was also good for what we say all the time that we need to when it comes to Ukraine. The to do outreach with the rest of the world. What's at stake in the in the uh, in the EU is not uh, sorry in Ukraine is not just a war that affects Ukraine. It's something larger. It's 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 the way we see the world. It's our values. It's multilateralism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that also uh, that's why it's very important that that uh, that uh, our relation with uh, with all these countries it's it's smooth. And then I will link it to the uh, and I see David there to another important, uh, I would say, huge event that took place, uh, which was the Latin America, I mean, the, the summit between the EU and Latin America and the Caribbean, which was uh, not the only event when it came to, to, to Latin America and the Caribbean and the EU, because there was also the parliamentary dimension, as David uh, knows much better, but that's, that's for him to elaborate 
uh, later or, or whenever you want. But it was uh, a very successful summit. Uh, I mean, the, the, the level of participation was huge. We had all 27 leaders. And uh, having the, the numbers here, I don't want to, to, to mistake when it comes to, uh, the, I think it was 50 something uh, leaders from, from Latin America, 53 heads of state and government from, from Latin America. We managed to get a joint declaration. Uh, you might say, oh, how boring a joint declaration. The joint declaration is not, uh, it, it was not, uh, it was, it, it, I mean, the negotiations were hard, but I think that if we look at that declaration, particularly now, that we had uh, the G20 summit, I think that you, we can be even more proud of what we achieved. Uh, you look at what what was said in both of them, for example, when it comes to Ukraine, and, and I want to re reduce everything to Ukraine, I think we uh, it was very, very a very important milestone to show that Latin American countries are on our side when it comes to Ukraine, and they share definitely our values, and particularly they, that's why they are the most Euro compatible region in, in, in the world. And they, 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 I mean, as you know, we have a joint declaration signed by everyone. And only on that paragraph, there was one country, Nicaragua, namely, that didn't sign, which I think showed that all the rest signed, which I think that proves that even those who are maybe more, uh, less, uh, how would I put it? Um, they, 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 they have so many other nuances here and there when it comes to Ukraine they uh, decided to co-sign and, and, and share what we were saying about Ukraine in, 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 that, in that paragraph. But it's, as I said, there's much more when it comes to, to, to the importance of that summit. For example, the investment uh, package, which, which, uh, which is 45 billion, which is not all that bad. And when it comes to investment packages, I often say it's not, I mean, money is not the only thing that counts. Huh? Uh, and we know very well, you compare the figures, uh, that the EU, uh, I mean, that that, that um, the the figures in the investment package for for the uh, for the Africa for Africa in the the in the summit between the European Union and the African Union, and you compare that to the to the summit with ASEAN, you would say uh, that the the relationship between the EU and ASEAN is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's not important because the figure is is much lower. I think that no one would agree that the, the relationship between the EU and ASEAN is not important at all. So I think it's, it's, it's not just about figures, but nevertheless, 45 billion is not all that bad. And there were agreements in many other sectors, like for example, energy, raw materials, there were several MOUs, et cetera. So I think it was a very, very big event. And, and the discussion among leaders, particularly the second day, uh, the, the, the summit was delayed and delayed and delayed. Uh, because actually the, the, it was gaining momentum. And, and I mean, you just look at the, uh, the statements by Lula, some of the others saying that they had never seen Europe so closer, so warm vis-a-vis -vis them than in, in this summit. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I think it was, it's, it's a good result. Now, um, what uh, are we going to try to achieve in the coming months? Well, that, that I, can, I can give you the, the long answer or the, or, the, or the short answer, if I want to be very ambitious and say you whatever, because at the end of the day, we never know what, what, what we're going to achieve. Uh, definitely, I am going to say the first thing we want to achieve, because I see the, the ambassador over there, is to close the agreement with Andorra. That's, that's going to be our, definitely, our main objective these days. Then the MFF and migration and all the others come, but Andorra is going to come first. So, so I, I, uh, we need to work and you need to do your, your thing. We were with, with Vice President Sefcovic uh, in, in Strasbourg. We discussed about that. So we hope to deliver, to deliver uh, about that. Uh, uh, but I mean, when it comes to big, big events, of course we have Granada with the, as I said, and in Granada is to look at we have been doing since Versailles, on reindustrialization, for example, on the strategic autonomy, for example. But it's also Granada, uh, which, I mean, uh, needs to be um, um, a summit, uh, an informal council where leaders look at the future, look what we still need to do in order to reinforce that, that strategic autonomy of, of the EU, uh, but uh, but also, you know, uh, to, to sort of uh, kick uh, off or to, to start with the strategic agenda for the for the next for the next mandate. Uh, that strategic discussion has to be linked, of course, with things that are going to happen. 
uh, like for example, uh, enlargement. Uh, that is, we, we will take decisions. I mean, leaders will take decisions in December, uh, uh, and the process formally would start after Granada. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, as we know, there are many things linked to that. I mean, even a debate about about ourselves, about the EU, about EU integration, about deepening our, uh, you know, some some call it absorption capacity uh, uh, reforms. I mean, you can you can. I think you can frame it more positively or less positively, but at the end of the day, I think we need to to be ready for for enlargement. Let's. Uh, I think that's maybe more more neutral. So that's what I would expect uh, out of out of Granada. Um, on uh, on uh, on the first priority that we had, you know, the reindustrialization. Of course, there are, there are many things that um, would be discussed uh, in the coming in the coming months. Uh, for the lion refer to some of these issues so because there i can say you okay you have these files that we need to we need to achieve but uh, i mean um, batteries are going to be there in the air cars i'm, su I'm sure is going to be there uh, let, let's, let's let's leave it like that and then in discussion we, <laughs> we come back on the green transition we know i mean the reform of the electricity market that's going to be there the reinforcing of the security of energy supply, the encouraging of deployment of renewables uh, to close whatever needs to be closed when it comes to 455, promoting the energy uh, of energy from renewable sources, energy and building efficiency, energy succession, sustainable mobility and transportation. On, uh, on the third theme, economic uh, justice, social and economic justice there, uh, I have two two issues here. The first one is the MFF. Well, the MFF goes beyond just uh, social and economic justice. It's, it, 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 it's also about EU's unity, because resources are needed to actually, uh, you know, deliver results about Ukraine, but also about other things, about migration, for example, about about uh, the challenges that we have uh, coming now from the south. We, we we see the situation in which the southern neighborhood is, and we see what's going on in the Sahel. So it's uh, we need to think about that too. Um, we have this step and this um, flexibility, let's put it that way, uh, flexibilization of, of funds, how to better use what we have. Should we need more uh, on that? That's also going to be uh, there. Uh, so anyway, the MFF is going to be uh, important. Um, uh, on, on that theme, social and economic justice, uh, we need to continue combating against human trafficking, child abuse and violence against women. That's high in our agenda. So uh, anti-slap, very important. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting uh, in the coming weeks with uh, Vice President Jourova precisely on that. Very important. She's very worried. Uh, I mean, oh, uh, she wants to push it. Worried in the sense that she, 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 she wants to push this. We do that too. So we will uh, devote uh, a lot of energy to that. And when it comes to, to European unity, uh, let me touch upon three things. Uh, enlargement. We will. We had uh, a meeting with Commissioner Varelli yesterday, also in Strasbourg. Um, I mean, leaders are going to, we have to, to, to decide about, about that in, in December, what are we going to do with the, uh, with Ukraine, with Moldova, with Georgia, with the Balkan, with the Western Balkans. Uh, it's clear that I think that needs political will and determination. It's clear that, uh, yeah, that it's, 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 I mean, everyone says that, but, and I agree with that, that uh, it's also a merit-based um, um, process, and therefore they need to uh, deliver on the reforms that, uh, you know, they were set uh, in order to open negotiations. How exactly that's going to be framed in December, we can speculate, we can open, we can open with conditions, and we cannot open. Basically, these are the three options. I don't see any other one. Uh, we can open to all of them or to just part of them. But I think that the mixture of merit-based, political will, determination, uh, all that, that's what's going to be, uh, you know, uh, assessed by our leaders. And then in December, in December, I agree. Migration and asylum, uh, not an easy, not an easy files, files, because it's actually a group of files, a pact. Um, not easy uh, as a whole, uh, not, not easy for many member states. From a point of view, 
the importance is to see and to have an overall balance between all the different elements there, responsibility and solidarity for sure. Uh, and I think that what, that's, that's how uh, uh, the president of the commission framed that yesterday. And there I agree with her that, that, that's, that, that there's a balance between different con concepts that needs to be achieved. It's not easy because um, we don't have all the files to negotiate uh, with the parliament yet. That's, that's a, a little problem, I would say. Um, because, for example, as you know, crisis regulation is part of the pact, a very important part of the pact, but we don't have a, a, a mandate, a general approach uh, within the council. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I had three trilogues on Tuesday on, on, on procedure, uh, APR, asylum procedure regulation, on AMMR, asylum migration uh, management regulation, and, and Eurodac. I think things are movement, moving. Um, We still have some some months, but I I, I do think that um, that the it's a fragile uh, window of, window of, of opportunity. So, but we will try to to see if we can take advantage of of that. Um, uh, we have fiscal rules. You know, the economic governance is also very important. It requires unanimity. It's part is important for social and economic uh, justice uh, system. It's also important for growth for investment. We need to you know it, that it's a question of balance there too. It's a question of credibility. Well, yeah, we still have some months to, to go. We'll see how it goes, but we will invest in, uh, time and effort in, in, in that. And then we want to make or we want to, co to contribute to, to making the EU more operational. And uh, the way we see is that, that that debate on, for example, on qualified majority, I don't want to enter on what's going to happen with the reform of the treaties. We will do our job if the, if the parliament pushes for that. We know what uh, what needs to be done in those cases and, and who has, uh, you know, a role to play here and there. But there are many things that can be done to to uh, um, um, to be more, uh, I would say, to be to to be more. Uh, I mean, namely the 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 the, the increasing of uh, qualified majority. I think is a, is a important debate. Um, some think that, as you know, that unity is better preserved uh, when, through unanimity. Uh, and they have their own argument, and I can understand that. Uh, some believe, and that's the belief of, of, of uh, our presidency, that that um, qualified majority uh, could allow, indeed, uh, for uh, an increase in unity, and at the same time, um, you know, improve our efficiency. It doesn't have to be all the way, but I mean, the treaties allow for many things to be done. So with, for that, we should not not wait. Not wait. So in a nutshell, that's um, I think I was. Uh, I promised I was going to be shorter, and maybe I was longer. So that's how we see things coming from uh, what, how we saw uh, our presidency was going to be, what we we've been doing so so far, and and what we're trying to do in the months to come, on the basis of of what we have huh? and the political. And, and the political European context that, that we are in, because um, things happen in, in a context, uh, and that's the only way to actually move forward. So thank you very much, and I'm at your disposal. Well, thanks so much. Thanks so much uh, to you, Mr. Ambassador, taking the time to setting out your priorities. And to kick off the conversation, let me start with the situation in, in Ukraine, because I think it was a very important signal that your Prime Minister Sanchez kicked off the Spanish presidency in Kiev. And I think especially since Ukraine's victory is tied to the political will of its allies, I think that's a very important symbol as well. But given the fact that, of course, the presidency is needed to be acting as the honors broker and given the need for unity you spoke about, how do you perceive the words of President von der Leyen yesterday? Because she spoke about the importance of Europe being bold, because she said when Europe is bold, it gets things done. And then she said, so let's stand together. And I was wondering, in light of that role as the honest broker and the need for unity, because you also refer to the need for pro-European societies, do you think that von der Leyen's, warning, von der Leyen's words are stating the status quo? Or are they a warning that you have to deal with that and need that unity? And is that a challenge for you as a presidency? Does it work? It's working. Okay, if it's working, then thank you. Um, I don't know it's it's a difficult, it's a very good question, but it's very difficult to answer. I think that the commission, I mean, 
let's 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 go be direct. I, I think that if we define or we need to define not the commission, but the president of the commission, I wouldn't choose the word honest broker. The commission is an honest broker, and I think she can be an honest broker in many ways, but I think she's also a leader. She's 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 brought leadership into the commission. Then we can argue whether that's a good one or a bad one or a good leadership or not, but, but definitely she she's she steered the the commission uh towards what she believes. She said that, and she's not tricking anyone. She said uh, at the beginning of her mandate that she wanted a geopolitical uh and it was at the beginning of anyway, she said that she wanted a geopolitical uh, commission. Uh I don't think I don't know if that's 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 uh, what I don't as broker truly honest broker would, would actually say. Uh, but definitely she's brought uh, the commission or she's taken, um, she's seen, she sees the moment, the geopolitical moment. It happened with the, with the uh, COVID, with the vaccines, and uh, definitely with the, with the war in Ukraine, uh, where I think that uh, she pushed, she uh, proposed, I mean, that's very clear. The robust uh, packages uh, of sanctions uh, that uh, helped, uh, and there was unity behind them, that helped the EU have a, a, a strong response, uh, which was good, I think, for Ukraine, which was good also for the EU, because it is that, that such a, that, that response had a positive e effect on, on us. Um, I tend to think that the EU, uh, us, we we thought that we were uh, a mighty uh, area in the world space, but that we had been very mighty, almighty, and that we were in decline, and that the decline was irreversible. I think one of the good things about that moment was that we realized we uh, the EU we thanks to the uh, also to 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 her to a certain extent I mean we, I, I don't say it was just her but anyway her leadership realized that uh, we are still alive and kicking and that we can uh, play a role in the way the future uh, world will be shaped uh, and we can play a role in in supporting uh, Ukraine and more importantly, in supporting the way we think the world should be and our values and all these things that we say. And I think it was, we, we, we gained trust, I mean, and confidence in ourselves. Um, now, uh, when it comes to enlargement, so, so the, the uh, I think enlargement is more alive than it was before. That's also very obvious, as well as the Ukraine is closer to the EU as it was before, thanks to this war, Putin, has, has pushed the enlargement agenda. Uh, Putin has pushed the Ukraine towards the EU and the EU towards Ukraine. So, uh, so I mean, clearly the enlargement is in the political agenda and leaders have that in mind. And they, I think they, they have a different mindset and they are much more open to, 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 to enlargement. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't, that they don't realize what is at stake and that we need uh, to take advantage uh, of of the moment to actually, uh, you know, I mean, help um, candidate countries, uh, while at the same time reinforce the EU. I mean, they want to become part of the EU because the EU is something they like. But 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 the EU needs to have a play, needs to have a uh, uh, a say in the world by being. Uh, integrated, united. It's not a lose uh, or loser, uh, no, loser in the sense that to lose uh, EU. That that that's uh, what we need, want to achieve. So, I think that she was. Um, I mean, she was uh, prudent. Uh, but but fine. I mean, to me, I mean, I mean, the months to come, we'll 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 we will see. I have many more questions, but I'm conscious of the fact that I think you need to leave in 10 minutes. So I'm going to open up the floor to the audience. And it would be great if you could state your name and affiliation and indeed keep your questions short and also linked to the presidency. So my colleagues will go round. So I think Eleonora, you're keen to have the first question. So Eleonora here in the front. And then because I'm going to take two at a time, I see uh, another hand over there. So Tatjana, perhaps over there in the corner. Yes. The lady in. 
reddish orange was first. Eleanor, please. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, my name is Eleonora Vartignan, representing the European Brain Council and the European Health Parliament 7th edition, which is the voice of the youth in public health. Uh, I really like the four pillars that you have. I think it really shows how pro-European you are in the closer collaboration within member states. So uh, it's very promising already what you have there. But I'm missing the element of health. And uh, in the, of course, it can be incorporated in these four pillars. But uh, also, given the previous mandate of the Commission, we had a very strong commitment to have the health in all policies and strengthen uh, the pillar of health, especially when it comes to crisis preparedness for the next pandemic and so on. So I'd like to hear from you, what is your perception if you're going to keep the health in all policies approach and specifically a target disease areas or what you're going to try to prioritize? Thank you. Yes, your question. Um, thank you very much for your time. My name is Birte Scorpion and I work for the Danish Refugee Council. I have a question with regards to migration and asylum. Yesterday, we heard um, von der Leyen's State of the Union, where she really flagged um, that there would be more deals or more agree agreements with other countries, like we recently have had the one with Tunisia. Is it part of your pre presidency priorities to make those? And if so, is there an indication on which countries are considered at the moment? For health and migration. Yeah. No, very good questions. Well, then, thank you. Thanks a lot. On, 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 on health, uh, I didn't mention that, but health is definitely part of our program. You look at it uh, to move towards a, a union of health, so to speak, it's, it's, it's included. And um, linking it to the, the discussions of leaders in, in, um, in Granada and, 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 and looking forward and uh, foresight, you know that we have um, at the Prime Minister's office, there's a strong team uh, working on foresight and there's a network of foresight ministers and, and, and foresight units and they have prepared a, a paper um, uh, on, on, on foresight precisely and one of the areas that is, is being covered there which where the EU needs to do more in the, the future is definitely health so that's that's uh, in, in the radio screen and I think that's uh, definitely an important uh, I mean, area in which we need to move forward no no we 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 like health. I mean, we, we want more um, in the EU to do more on health. Uh, on migration, uh, and Tunisia, yes, exactly. Very important one. You said that uh, whether that was a priority for us. I mean, as you know, the MOU with Tunisia was not uh, was not negotiated by the presidency. And um, so, so uh, you know, you ne we need to call, I mean, talk and ask, uh, uh, first of all, the commission. I mean, it was not just the commission doing the, the, the deal, but anyway. And you know uh, that is not uh, a peaceful, uh, I would say. Um, I mean, it has advantages. It has it has positive elements, and uh, and clearly, we need to contribute to stabilize to to to, to stabilize uh, Tunisia, uh, for many points of view. That's in the interest of the EU. Uh, but there are concerns about how the not only the member states should be who have been involved previously, but also, of course, about human rights and, you know, uh, where are the conditions here and there. Right now, what I can say about about that is that uh, I think we are too late to to turn back and, and to say, OK, there's no deal. Uh, it's all about implementation. So I think that we, we need to try to see if we can implement this in a in a constructive, positive, and, and, and efficient way. And, and then that remains to be seen, we'll see. Now, when that's going to be extended to others, uh, what well, you know that President for the Lion, she, she, she wants uh, to use that as a blueprint. Um, uh, I mean, exactly the same, it would be difficult, but what, what's, what, uh, uh, where I would agree is that migration is not, I mean, migration. I mean, this, this MOU, which has many aspects, one is migration. Um, which applies to Tunisia, uh, the other countries in the region that play a role also on, on many, I mean, have uh, similar challenges, not exactly the same, but I mean, we can think of uh, Libya, we can think of Egypt, we can think of uh, Morocco, Algeria, Mauritania, not to forget, uh, are also looking what, what, what we are doing on, uh, on, on, with, with Tunisia. And, and I mean, they are constructed, they are, they are, we are cooperating with them, so if we are doing things with Tunisia that, uh, you know, maybe we should also think uh, about uh, about the others. So that element of whether that should be exactly, we should replicate exactly what we've done with the MOU, maybe have more reluctance, whether we can use many some of the elements on, on the Tunisia, definitely the funds, uh, to use them 
in our negotiations and our relations uh, with the others? Yes, definitely we need more funds and definitely we need to engage with these countries in a wide way. We cannot just talk about migration with these countries. That's quite obvious. The next two questions. I saw the gentleman in front of Beard, so perhaps Tatiana, if you already could pass the mic there. And I think I see another hand over there. Great, two questions. And I think in light of time, these will be the two last questions. <clears throat> Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Todd Buell. I'm a journalist with a, a specialist newswire called Law360, and I write about tax policy. And I heard you say from the podium something about the energy tax directive. And I'm wondering if you could clarify whether uh, the Spanish presidency it, it hopes or is expecting to have a deal in the council on, on the energy tax directive, because I remember there was a rather tense debate on that in the previous or in the Swedish presidency. So I'm wondering if Spain thinks that uh, you can get a deal on that. Thank you. Yes. So the, the next question, please. I'm Gabriela Kovac from uh, DG Radio, and actually I just press wait for the uh, mic. Great. Yes. So my name is Gabriela Kovac. I'm from uh, DG Radio, and I have two questions. One is similarly to the last um, uh, Spanish presidency, is there any cooperation uh, between uh, Spain, uh, Belgium and Hungary? And if so, what are the common uh, topics and priorities for these presidencies? And the second question is because of my position. Uh, what would be uh, the achievement of the uh, Spanish presidency and the end of this year? Uh, what uh, make, would make you happy? Very good last question. There you go. Thanks a lot for that, and apologies. I have to leave a shot because I have a VTC now that was not foreseen, but so that's what better. I, with the first one, I will be very quick because I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, uh, probably if I knew, I wouldn't tell you completely unless it was a deal, the deal was already there. But uh, to be honest, I, I don't know what, I mean, we will do, uh, we, we will push it all the way, but are we going to have a deal? I don't know, but I, also because I don't have the latest. Huh? Uh, so, so, uh, um, things evolve quite quickly, and I was uh, on all the files uh, lately, so I don't know exactly the, the latest, but so we'll see. <laughs> on 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 uh, on your two questions on the trio, we do have a trio program, yes, between with uh, with Hungary and and Belgium. Um, and it's a normal thing to do. Um, uh, having said that, I think we are a very strange trio, though. Uh, so I would put things in perspective. Uh, why are we a strange trio? Because we are very weird, uh, very different from each other. We wouldn't say that's the case, but we are very strange in the sense that we have, as you say, a full presidency just before the end of the mandate. Then we have the Belgians uh, somehow uh, halfway uh, trying to finalize things, managing the elections and the and the and the uh, establishment uh, of the of the new commission. And then we have the Hungarians in a complete different uh, moment with. Uh, a new commission in the making, but by the time the new commission will be actually uh, working at the earliest on the 1st of November, they have one month. So, so I mean, the differences between the three moments are so huge that actually at the end of the day, I don't know if it, it, it really matters so much that we have such a the program, but the program is there. We work on it very professionally and we will take advantage of that. And there's going to be some continuity in some of the, some of the issues. Huh? Uh, and there are some priorities in which we agree. There are nuances, and you can imagine very well, in which um, some of us, we want to go all the way, and some others don't want to go all the way or don't want to move uh, at all. On the second question, which which is what, what would make me happy at the end, I mean, I could be, I could give you the easy question, the easy answer, the bad one. I mean, uh, the summit, for example, with Latin America was a very important milestone for me. Uh, and the moment it came, and I think it was important so that we showed our level of ambition and that we showed that we were determined from day one, that elections had no role, I mean, national elections had no role to play in, in, a, in, 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 in our presidency, and, and, and I'm very proud of that achievement. So, so I could even say, okay, that's, you know. Um, now I would say, that uh, what I expect from 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 uh, from us at the pen rep, I mean, from the presidency, uh, is, is is maybe too big a word in the months to come. Is that in the difficult fights, in the big ones, in enlargement, in MFF, or things like that, we play uh, our role. But those are the files where that go really beyond the presidency. 
so that's what I would say. Yeah. I believe we could have gone for much longer because I had also prepared questions indeed about economic governance reform and also uh, given you mentioned um, also social justice and, and the need for investment, how indeed you feel about the Spanish Dutch proposal that you uh, presented last year and if you feel that that's reflected in the current proposals, also of course about the green transition and the trade-offs needed between um, nature and businesses, as you say, but again, uh, I'm very conscious of your time. So I will keep it at this. Because I think that's an important thing. You, you mentioned when it came to, to economic governance, the, the non-paper between the, the Dutch uh, and us. Uh, and I think that one, one of the good things about uh, what do we think, uh, about the war, for example, and that is that uh, we're breaking stereotypes. And one of the stereotypes is that uh, that we're breaking is that on economic issues, the Dutch and the Spaniards can actually work together and have even the same, uh, you know, uh, parameters. When it comes to Ukraine, the same. The prime minister, as you, as you mentioned, started in Kiev. Sanchez, that's where, where he went. That, 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 that there, where he went, and then you saw, in July, uh, quite large number of achievements were uh, precisely on Ukraine. Edirpa, Azap, uh, as I said, Poskotonu, the sanctions on Belarus. So I think, I mean, we are one of the countries with, uh, I mean, not like Poland, of course, but with 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 a higher number of of um, of refugees from from Ukraine. So I think the war, the way things are doing is good uh, good for to break stereotypes and and i think the the the, the example you gave is a, is a is a good example about that yes. well many many things i would like to ask you for an applause for the ambassador for his time for your Many thanks, also many thanks to you as the audience. Um, I would say keep following the EPC because we have a very busy calendar for the autumn with a lot of interesting events. So if you are not yet subscribed to our newsletter, please have a look at the website and do. So I hope to see you soon. Have a nice day. Thanks, Elizabeth. Well, thanks to you. No, no, I understand. I mean, uh, you may